the rift between the GMD of NNPC Mekan Tibaru and of course the junior minister for petroleum in Nigeria Ibe Kachuku has got people talking the memo of course the leaked memo by Ibe Kachuku written by Ibe Kachuku to the president has also further exposed some things going on in that sector the senate has also instituted a committee to investigate the allegations raised by uh, the junior minister for petroleum Ibe Kachuku. Good morning. It's your favorite program this morning. My name is Femi Akonde. Well, that will be our topic today, and I have here to discuss the topic uh, Chief Larry Razak. He's a political affairs analyst, a former commissioner for public transportation in Lagos State, and of course, a politician. Welcome to the program, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. And engineer, Chief Engineer Martin Onovo a politician and a prominent petroleum engineer in the country. Welcome to the program, sir. Thank you very much. Okay. So, um, Chief Lani Razak, I would like to start with you. You've heard all of this. It's been in the news, the leaked memo by the Junior Minister for Petroleum, Ibe Kachuku, exposing the misconduct or, or, or exposing some things happening in that oil sector, especially um, with contract awarding and some other issues. What do you make of all this? Well. It's good for the country and the system. It goes for accountability and transparency. It shows that Buari's governance he had given his ministers the right to let him hear what is going on in their ministries. And I salute the courage of the junior minister for writing that memo. Though it may not be good for the government to expose such memo, to the press before the decision of the president over the memo. That could have placed us in a good position to see what is the mind of the president on this type of issues. Mm. It's a serious matter. Serious in the sense that we are promoting transparency, accountability, and no zero tolerance for corruption. And if this happens in our tenor, we must give a hard look and see the true position of things. Mm. Uh, one may be difficult position, like me, to assert a position now, because it's just like matters placed before the judge is what to decide. We have not been able to get the reaction of that man, yeah. and we don't know the level of his authori authorization, whether he has the right from the president to do such a thing without due process and letting the ministers supervising the NMPC to know what he was doing, I, I don't know yet. But as we go along with the scenario, a better game will come up and we'll know what is really happening. Mm -hmm. If the man had acted on lay alone without authorization of the necessary authority, he will have himself to blame. Because I know the Buari will know and you know and, I, and, and this country appreciate will not take person doing wrong things to remain in this right. government. All right, All right. Uh, let me come to you now, Engineer Martin Onovo. What does this say about that sector, the oil sector in Nigeria? Because this has um, exposed some things going on, um, misconduct on the part of the NNPC GMD in terms of awarding contracts and uh, even in subordination. What does this tell you about activities in that sector? <clears throat> and it's also a critical sector in Nigeria's economy. I'm, I'm happy you appreciate that it is, it is a critical sector. I, I'll say it's a very critical sector because when you get more than 90% of your foreign exchange inflow from a particular sector, yeah. that, that we may need another word that is higher than critical <laughs> to apply to that sector. Yeah. And that's the reality. Like uh, Chief Razak has said, I, I agree that it is good for the system. Uh, we must congratulate the minister for bringing uh, this to the attention of the president uh, because uh, the president cannot see what happens far below him. Sure. So it is good that he, this is brought to his attention so that he can take action. But I also think that we need as a people realizing the predicament in which we are to be a little more proactive. I think that the president, if he were proactive, could have seen or sensed this a long time ago. Because the memo said it has happened for one year. 
And it is obvious that the vice president from that letter, Professor Oshimbajo, noticed it from that memo. Because the memo says that the vice president directed the GMD of NPC to go and review it with the Minister of State. Which, according to the memo, the GMD did not do. So I won't see it as a regular administrative slip. I will see it as a confirmation of the fundamental dysfunctionality of the current government. And I insist on that because these things are preventable. Sure. Why do you have systems in place? The GMD used the NMPC tenders, tenders board for those contracts. Now, the tenders board has a limit of $20 million for contracts it can give final approval to. Now, from $20 million to $200 million is a factor of 10. From $200 million to a billion dollars is a factor of five. So going to only $1 billion is already a factor of 50. Yeah. And we're talking about one of the contracts was $10 billion. Where does that happen? Who does that kind of thing? So this is the reality and it's a reflection. Because if you can see such a gap that is so deep, it means that there are so many other small gaps yeah, you didn't see. <coughs> you didn't see. And the interesting thing is that the vice president, when he was acting president, saw it and tried to correct it. Why did the president not see it? Why did he approve those appointments? Why were the contracts approved? Why are the laws of Nigeria being violated? Because the NMPC board is set up by the NMPC Act. Sure. So it's law. It's not your opinion. It's not administrative convenience. It is the law of the country. So when we allege lawlessness in this government, this is evidence. But Chief Razak, um, you also talked about the posture of Mr. President frowning at um, corruption. But people are saying Mr. President is also the Minister of Petroleum. And this is happening under a sector he is believed or is supposed to supervise. What, 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 how do you react I, to that? I have said one thing, which is elaborating on. Mm. I said, I don't know the level of the authorization of the GMD, of yeah, the NMPC. It is believed that he uh, carried out these acts without even um, and, um, uh, um, consulting with the board and even the Ministry of Petroleum. Let me go further. The non-appointment of functional board in non-government agencies may allow this type of situation to happen. We should realize one thing, that the president have responsibility for whatever happened under his tenure. Sure. And that you delegate your authority to somebody and there are misbehavior does not exonerate you from being blamed. And that's why I, am, I said that I was waiting for the reaction of the president on this matter. And that could have placed me in a position to be able to be assertive in whatever I want to say. The, the problem in this country is not only the political leadership. Those in service, the civil servant and public officers of this nation, they need to search their mind. Are they doing it right? What is the reason for that gentleman to take such a decisions? What prompted him to award contract of that magnitude without authorization, without authority, without legal framework that authorizes him to do such a thing. It is a test case for Mr. President. Mm. If what happened is the true position of things, let's see what happens in this country. Yeah. As some people are appointed to be so powerful that they don't have regard for the law of the land, are they sacred cow? It can't be so. What is said, and that if that is true, that the acting president saw the situation and directed him to do the needful and he ignored, that is a serious... That's another insubordination, insubordination. of the highest order. Of the highest order. Of the, highest order. <laughs> the acting president so was the commander-in-chief at that time. So it means that this let, man is let, above all the Let's see how the whole thing play out. I think it's good for Nigerians to know that something is going on that is not too good. And let's see how that going on that is not good is being 
handled and eventually corrected and stopped. Mm. And that is one of the loopholes could, that could not make us make the, 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 the progressive tendencies we needed in government. Yeah. Now, this rift that is now at the fore, some people have said is um, symptomatic of a troubled sector. No, no. You know why? Uh, like a chief said, whatever happens in this administration is the fault of the president. Whatever happens in the last administration is the fault of the president. Because you must ask, you cannot take authority and reject responsibility. In management school, what we were taught is that authority and responsibility go together, which is what Chief has said in different words. Now, you took the responsibility of making the appointment. You have the responsibility of the administrative oversight. You have the responsibility of political leadership. That's enormous responsibility, and that's what you get paid to do. So it's not about one bad guy in the system. No. These are deviations that have become institutionalized in the Nigerian dysfunctionality. Let me give you some short historical background. When Chief Dr. Obasanjo was uh, President and Commander in Chief, his Vice President was in our own opinion, the most powerful vice president this country has ever had. That vice president, while in office, complained that the government was unable to get correct figures out of the NMPC. That the more you look, the less you see. The the less you see. see. That was a sitting, powerful vice president. Now, when did that happen? That happened over 10 years ago. Why has it not been corrected? I can tell you very simply. It is not because the GMD of NMPC is powerful. The GMD of NMPC is a small fellow <coughs> in government. It's a very small fellow. In the first place, it's under the NMPC board. It's a small fellow. The politicians in a democracy take leadership. And the politicians in leadership are the most powerful people in any democracy anywhere in the world. So it is not because NMPC is bigger than government. It is because, historically, NMPC is a source of slush funds for the political leadership. NMPC is a source of slush funds for the political leadership. But this NMPC was unbundled a while ago, and it, this hasn't really changed much. Well, you see, that is the issue when we chase shadows. You started with unbundling old NEPA which was a wrong administrative solution to a serious system problem. We have this tendency, because of our political corruption, to deliberately misrepresent issues and get a wrong diagnosis and then apply wrong solutions. That is why these same system problems have persisted. Mm. There are Serious. I, I, yes, I, I want to defer yes, sir. at that point. Yes, sir. Okay. You see, the issue of uh, NEPA or PHCN is a different issue. It's an issue of, let's say, let's commercialize. Let's remove government hand in some government business to provide efficiency and better service to the people. It has happened in our telephone system. We introduce these mobile phones, and every Nigerian is a happy person about the phone today, no complaint. And if we are going through NEPA, whatever name you give to it, if there are issues, government will sit down. When you start anything, some unknown and unforeseen situation may arise. All you need to do is to look at it critically and over solution. What we are discussing is the issue of NNPC. The issue of NNPC, we, we, we just have to agree on one thing, that we have the kind of officers of this government that still believe that there should be accountability. Maybe in the past, worse things do happen. Maybe we don't have Kashiku kind of a person who will be bold enough to reduce it into writing and send it to Mr. Uh, President. Hold your thoughts on that and we we'll need to take a quick commercial break and we'll return to continue with the rest of the program.
Welcome back. We're still talking the rift between the GMD of the NNPC, Mekan Tibaru, and the Junior Minister of Petroleum in Nigeria, Ibe Kachuku. And I have here, <laughs> you were itching to say something. Yes. I said, like I was saying, I, I think uh, the Honorable Minister should be congratulated for not minding that it is her government, not minding that uh, the reaction of some people and their feelings, it still came up to tell Nigerians, this is happening. Let us get it done right. It was, uh, it was supposed to be a memo to the I, president. I'm coming. Just, it, it has a been exposed. Conversation. And it's in the public domain. You cannot but accept that it started to discuss what is not good enough with the president through his memo. Or could this also be that perhaps the memo didn't get to Mr. President? That is why someone somewhere along the line decided to leak it, put it in the public. That I will not be able to say yes or no because I don't have the true picture of what happened. But it has come to the public dummy. And you need to sit down, analyze the whole thing. We want to salute the man for being effective and efficient enough to tell Mr. President whether he knew through the letter or through the press, he is now aware that this is happening. And it is what we are saying it will never happen because of our commitment, zero tolerance for corruption. Let's see his reaction. And I know my Mr. President will act in tandem with the yearnings and feelings of Nigeria. Well, these really are weighty allegations. In the memo, um, the GMD of NNPC, Mekanti Bar, was accused of um, circumventing extant procurement regulations in awarding a series of contracts up to $25 billion, that is 9 trillion naira, at the prevailing exchange rate of 360 naira to a dollar. The minister warns that this action, if it is allowed to stand, could wreak serious havoc, of course, on the country's economy. He awarded contract without recourse to the Ministry of Petroleum or the management of the board. He also uh, awarded like crude oil lifting contracts to some organizations that are believed to not even be registered in Nigeria and don't pay tax in Nigeria. Those, those are all these are allegations. And I believe if the man is not sure of the contents of that letter, he will not get it to the president because he knows the implication of giving false information. Let's wait for that gentleman. Let him face the public and tell us exactly what he has done. But this coming and from let's wait for Mr. President's reaction. But I know this president will not tolerate nonsense mm -hmm. because his position is that tolerance of mm -hmm. corruption is not available for him. Zero tolerance mm -hmm. for corruption. Let's wait. Mm -hmm. But I want you to agree with me one thing that worse things than this had happened in the past. And because of the position of the president, mm. that Kajeku himself is trying to let him know that what we are saying we don't want is happening. Let's deal with it. They will deal with the matter. All right. Martins Onovo, Chief Razak said, let's wait. But you know, this memo um, was dated August, August 30th. And you know, people, people are saying from August 30th till now, before it um, became something of um, public discourse now, nothing has happened about it. And you know, since the president returned from um, his long medical vacation, people have expected um, so many things, even with some people expected a rejig or a reshuffle of his cabinet and some other things they expected that the president would have done as a matter of urgency. And now here we have it, the issue in the NNPC, of course, as exposed by this leaked memo um, written by Kachuku. Let's wait. For how long? Is it take, do you think it's taking the president too long to act? Well, it is clearly taking too long to act, very clearly. Like you said, the letter is dated August. And like you started with the beginning, this is a critical sector. And I try to go further to support your position by saying that a sector that gives more than 90% of your foreign exchange in an import-dependent economy has to be something more than critical. Now, in that memo, which obviously has all the credibility in the world, because the memo, if you have read it, I have read the okay. copy, yeah. authentic, not newspaper, mm. with all the annexures. It has annexures. So, and don't forget that it's coming from a superior about a subordinate. Someone who should know. Somebody who should know. So it's not coming from a subordinate, in which you might say that the superior has information the subordinate is unaware of. 
So, and this man who wrote this is not just Minister of State for Petroleum. He's the chairman of the board of NNPC. He was also the former GMD of NNPC. He was also the, the former four. GMD. So, so and uh, this looks very clear. And uh, being somebody who has been in this industry for nearly 30 years, I know the industry. So when I find something that is unusual, I can tell. What is happening is known to be happening. We have said it many times indirectly. But this is the one who has the direct evidence presenting it to the president. Secondly, this is not an ordinary slip. Just like I said, the appointment particularly, we are taking to the acting president. He directed the GMD according to that memo. The acting president is, is at home on his duty. Sure. Will a subordinate make this kind of claim if it is not true? No. That's far-fetched. So, he directed the GMD to go and review it with the Minister of State. The GMD waited, refused to remove, review it, till the president came back and went to mislead the president. So, the GMD has neglected the NMPC board, bypassed the minister, disregarded the acting president. Who is he? That's my question. We have a caller, Hassan from Lekki, is calling in to contribute on the program today. Good morning, Hassan. Welcome to the program. Good morning. Akonde. Yeah, thank you. Welcome. Good morning, Chief Larry Lazak. Good morning. Um, good morning, Mr. Onobo. Mr. Onobo, I know you as a politician, not as a gas and oil consultant. Mm, it's first. Because you were once a presidential candidate of a party. Yeah, he's first an oil um, consultant. Mr. Larry Lazak has said it all about this issue. You know, if you want to make an objective analysis of something, don't look at it from the partisan angle. Look at it from the patriotic angle of it. Mr. Larry Razak said one thing. He said, look, we need to wait. What are his limits of approvals? And a lot of things follow. This is no time for somebody to approve them to the minister, neither the GMD. The GMD is a bureaucrat. He rose through the ranks. We knew. The minister also was a bureaucrat from the OIC mobile. These are all excellent people. And everybody has a reason for, 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 for acting in his own way. This is no time for denials. This is no time for evasion. This is no time for alibi. Let us wait. Go and look at the content of the minister and let us see the reaction of the GMD. The essence of journalism here is very clear. And whatsoever the journalists are going to do, they have to be very, very complete, not to be partisan. You have to take from the both sides and compare notes. And you leave the rest for the judgment of the public opinion. All right. Thank you very much, Hassan from Lekki. He's aligning with um, your argument that says, let us wait. But looking at how critical this sector is, don't you think if we wait for... if for instance, we don't, okay, for how long will we wait and so as not to lose... L l let me tell you something. The, the letter was written in August. Yeah. I don't know what happened between August and now. But believe you, me, we are all Nigerians. Ah, Mr. President returned when? When will it have started looking at critical matters of the government? I still strongly believe that, like in the judiciary thinking, that it's even better to allow 20 criminals to go free rather than killing one or, or sentencing one innocent person. Let's, we've not heard from the man who we are alleging to have done all these wrong things. He will have reasons. Mr. President will receive all his reasons. 
and it will compare. I know the president is a fair president. It will feed the, na the nation back. What my honorable minister has said, these are the facts. My GDM and MPC, this is what is his reaction, and this is the true position. And until then, you cannot return a fadit. Let's wait. But I want to assure you of one thing. The Mohammed Buhari we all know, and I can claim to know him, is a fair and just person. He will not disappoint Nigerians. His fight for corruption is not selected. It's not targeted against any group or groups or individuals. It's a good information we are having about this happening. Uh, we have. And it will help Nigerians to assess and place the man at the end of the day. All right, let me bring in the caller, Mrs. Soye Olon. Good morning, ma'am. Soye Olon, good morning, ma'am. Hello, good morning, ma'am. Okay, um, let's let's continue with the uh, program. Good morning, Mr. Akonde. Yes, good morning, ma'am. Welcome to the program. Good morning to my elders here. I'm not a politician, but I'm an ob observer of what is going on. Hello? Yes. Go ahead, ma'am. Good morning. Good morning, we can hear you. Go ahead. Uh, I'm not a politician. Good. Okay then, um, I guess we lost that call. Now, this, okay, we need to go on a quick commercial break at this point and when we return we'll continue with the rest of the program. Don't go away. Welcome back to the program. I still have Chief Engineer Martin Onovo, a petroleum engineer, and of course, Chief Lanry Razak, a political affairs analyst here with me. Now, the Senate has waded in. The Senate has taken up the matter. They have instituted a committee that would investigate um, this matter. What does this, what does this pertain now about this um, whole matter? It, 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 does it now seem that, yes, there is now action will now be taken on this matter because a memo that was dated August 30, and some people have said um, there's inaction on the part of the presidency to investigate this matter, but now the Senate has, picked, has, has taken it up. The, the beauty of democracy is, is, is taking place. The National Assembly have oversight function to look at all issues on behalf of the people they are representing. They've heard this, and they'll be placed in a better position to receive answers from, for questions they will put to the combatants directly. They are representing us, and they are doing their job. And we want to congratulate the National Assembly, both the Senate President Bukola Sarake and Dogara, for the jobs they've been doing. And I, I, I thank them. And like I said, we should not jump gun. The result of that exercise and whatever the, government, the president will decide on this matter will be placed at the public domain and will be placed in a position to really appreciate that this government is a very functional government and looking at the issues. I would also like to hear um, what your impression of, or what you think about um, the Senate's action. But first, let me take um, Kusman from Ikorodu. Good morning, Kusman. Oh, I guess we lost that call. So go ahead. Well, the first thing, uh, while uh, like... Uh, Chief Razak has said, the legislature has authority to oversee every matter of public interest. And this will also help with transparency because by the fact that the legislature is looking at it, it will checkmate any executive cover-up. Because some uh, media have reported that uh, the president is meeting with the Minister of State today. Uh -huh. So if there's any plan for an executive cover-up, 
it will not be possible. So this is good for transparency. But back to the initial disagreement about uh, do we wait. We have waited two and a half years. What did we get? We have the case of Babachi Lawal, if you want to be specific about corruption. What have we achieved? It's an endless wait. Like I said, you need to be proactive. If you're proactive, then you will understand the wisdom of the British saying that prevention is better than cure. You don't create a problem and start solving it. If you prevent the problem, you make progress. This is very clear that an NMPC tenders board, which has an authority for final approval for contracts of $20 million, million went ahead beyond $200 million, beyond a billion dollars, and went to $10 billion. What additional violation do you need? Are we go is the GMD going to tell us that those contracts went to the NMPC board? Where Kajuku is the chairman? Will he tell us that? Please hold your thoughts. We have Prince Okora for calling from Arochuku in Abia State. Good morning. Yeah, good morning, Mr. Femi. Good morning, our guests in the studio, Mr. Nova and Mr. Lazar. Welcome you to see, the program. Nigeria is our country. We have to move forward. When two elephants fight, it is the grass that so the power consumed in the oil industry or the mineral is not what we should be expecting now. And we don't even accept such things. We have to move forward. As CMD, you have to give respect to the office of the minister. You see, the problem we have in Nigeria is that everybody thinks that when you are a guy at the top, no respect for anyone. And that is not the reason. You see, let me give you an instance. Look at uh, um, what happened in U.S. On the general ministry, this uh, Umba. What happened? At the end of the day, the authority took their stand. And what is happening? The uh, people there within that very management staff and the management level are moving. So I see no reason why in Nigeria aspect, we put in politics, sectionalism, tribalism, religious into this. That is our, our Nigeria for. We don't want to face reality. Let us remove all these uh, uh, all these intricacies or all these variables into our system of moving forward in terms of investment. If we continue like that, we are not going forward. Please, there is need for that. Uh, if your minister or to respect the office of the that is a subordinate respect the organ. Organ also have to respect the, uh, the, the subordinate. Please move forward. Where the two people start fighting, you cannot see any progress in any organization. It is generally. Respect, integrity is very, very important. Thank you very much, Mr. Femi, and the great studio. All right, thank you very much, Prince Okora. For is this a power tussle? Do you see this as a power No, it can't tussle? be a power tussle. There is a clear superior and there is a subordinate. The GMD cannot be bigger than the board. And do not forget, there is a dimension of lawlessness that we seem to wish to ignore. Mm. The NMPC board, like I said, is set up by law. It is not by administrative convenience. It is law. You must comply. And beyond mere disregard of our laws, there is also impunity, which is being encouraged about let us wait and see. Let us wait and see. Tomorrow you are going to hear a bigger scandal. This is the biggest scandal in the history of Nigeria. $24 billion or $25 billion, like you said, is about $9 trillion. It has never happened since 1960. And the people who are partisan and who are accusing of being partisan want the matter to be put away so that another scandal, now there's a new scandal that uh, IG of police impregnated a police woman. That's what they want to hear. And we will leave this big issue. Do you know that the estimated, estimated total national revenue in the 2017 budget is 4.9 trillion? And we're talking about a 9 trillion scam and we think that we should put it by the side? What is more important than that? Let's this may be the explanation why this country is in a, is in a economy. Okay, before, before I let you, I'm weighing on yes. that. Um, we have Ishak. Good morning, Ishak. Good morning, Femi. Um, good morning to your guest. Welcome to the program. Thank you. I think uh, for, for countries, for other nations to take us seriously, we should always follow the lay down rules and procedure. Uh, we have a group managing director 
Although, although the Minister of State said he has written to the President since August, I want to believe between August and now, the President ought to have replied even the letter. Uh, but however, I think since Senate is investigating, I would want to present what the outcome would be. But I want them to investigate properly if truly the group managing the right to as truly disregard or there's an act of insubordination. I think it should be punished. There should be a lay down rules and procedure. The Minister of State is the chairman of the Boiling Governing Council. I believe as if the president is the Minister of Petroleum, but the responsibility is delegated to the Minister of State. So any insult to the any disregard to the Minister of State, I view it as a disregard to the presidency himself. So I think the matter should be fully investigated. So that it will serve as different. We should always follow a laid down rules and procedure. So that is my take. Have a wonderful day. All right, thank you. Like, um, like I was trying to say, the figure staggering. We all had it. But no matter whatever happens, two wrongs don't make a right. I don't want to be an advocate of the gentleman, the GMD of NMPC, and I'm not saying he's a clean person. But we must follow due process to expose and establish all he has done and confirm that he's a factual that he has really committed offense. Then we apply right punishment. And until we get that done, that is when the international community will see us and see us as a good government. There is no way you effect punishment if you don't hear from him. After hearing from him, then we can take necessary action. And the team is in a better position. We have, I want to say again, I'm thanking the, 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 the Minister of State for at least initiating and presenting those things to the president. And it's good because he has done that. The National Assembly are working on it. Let's wait. If there are facts, and I've said one thing, there are level of authorization in government business. All right. If the man has no authority to do it to the level he has done, he will have himself to blame. And if he's really culpable and the president did not take the right action, then we may say, okay, your president is saying he's fighting corruption. This is a worse scenario. Why is he not doing it? Okay. It will amount to the situation that people are accusing okay. us of selecting issues of correction corruption that we are dealing with. Whereas, I have been telling you that the matter the president handles is holistic. It's not selective. All right, all right. While we wait for um, the president, let's not keep um, our caller, Samuel, waiting. Good morning, Samuel. He's calling from London. Hello. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Welcome um, to the program. And good morning. Go ahead, Samuel. Hello, you're on. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, good morning, Femi, and good morning to Chief Okoya and Engineer Onobo. You see, um, I've, been following this, um, I've been following this, uh, um, this letter that um, the Minister of State sent to the President. I think I'll just go straight to the point. I think Chief uh, Okoya is trying to be diplomatic and sentimental. I want to align myself with engineer or noble yet. Yeah. You see, the problem we have in Nigeria, I've come to, to the realization of the fact that the problem we have in that country is bad leadership. It's bad leadership. If we have good leader, you know how to put your house in order. And I've, I want to say here that Buari is abusing the trust that people repose in him. A lot of people voted for him based on his integrity, and based on this anti-corruption stance. But as it is today, I am telling you, this man is abusing the trust that people have in him. I don't want to believe that he is not aware of all what is going on within him. We have the case of Baba Chalawal, and the okay, nothing has been heard. This report has been submitted to him. We haven't gotten any reply from him. Now, this, this thing happened. We are talking about 9 trillion naira here. 9 trillion naira. The old nation should pause. The old nation, I expect NANS, everybody, 
Nigeria Labour Congress. They all right. Um, thank you very much. Well, the name is Chief Lanry Razak. Well, we'll go on a quick commercial break. I won't return. We'll continue with the rest of the program. Stay with us. Well, the rift between Ibe Kachuku, the junior minister of petroleum, and Mekanti Baro, the GMD of NNPC, has stirred quite a controversy in the country, and that is what we're discussing here in the studio. One of the issues raised is the appointments made by the GMD of NNPC. You've seen those appointments. What do you think, in your own opinion, is wrong with these appointments? You see, a lot of people think that federal character is an administrative requirement. If you're familiar with the Nigerian constitution, you know there's a constitutional requirement. That is the supreme law of the whole country, the constitution. And nobody is above the law. Nobody. Not even the National Assembly, which represents the people. Nobody is above the law. Those appointments were clearly skewed. The people of the Niger Delta have called for a review through PANDEF. Those uh, appointments do not accord with our laws. And in addition, there is serious demotivation in NMPC because of those appointments. Because they were not based on merit, they violated due process, and they are also sectionally biased. Now, the chairman of the board of NMPC, who is the Minister of State, said he read about the appointments in the NMPC press release. So it was not even copied for information. Please hold your thoughts. We have Yakub calling from Dr. Good morning. Welcome to the program. Yeah, thank you. Good morning, Yakande. Thank you, sir. And then good morning to the two wise men in the studio. And then uh, special inspector of uh, Engineer Onofo. I really love the way he spoke this morning. You see, as I, did, I want to give you three examples this morning. Number one. I personally am very disappointed the way the government is running because I'm a die-hard fan of the Mr. President. Everybody knew that. You see, a lot of things have been going wrong. I want to use this opportunity as well to call on uh, Ashwai to Bola Hamed in Ubu so not to keep silent. Because this is a government that is fought out for before they come to play. Why am I saying that? This is the information. I got an information this morning from a, a Kasim Wadziri, a senior lecturer from the University of Abuja in the, one of your sister stations. Do you know, Akade, that the board of the NIPT, the chief of staff for Mr. President, is a member? How could you be, Akade? Now, the, the minister is not complaining that he was not seen uh, Mr. President. How is he going to see Mr. President? When a situation, situation we are there, a board of a board of uh, NNPC, the, the chief of staff of Mr. President is a member. And then the GMP, he was even go straight to, 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 to the chief of staff of uh, Mr. President. And then he sat like a city minister. And then minister is not complaining that he's not sit for uh, Mr. President. Then, if you want to see a president as a minister, you will follow two chief, chief of staff. How do you go to see the president? What, who knows what is going on, going on between the chief of staff and the GMD? That is number one. The, the report that the vice president has been submitted to our president is this why? What happened to that report? We that we put that for Mr. Ben, uh, Mr. President. I can't say for Mr. President, and then people are kicking me in this area because I can't say for Mr. President, you need nothing. And then we put that for change. We are not seeing the case. All right, Mr. all right, all right. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Yakub. Thank you very much for your thoughts. Well, he talks about um, this appointment and, of course, that um, Mr. President's Chief of Staff is also a member of this board. I, I think he's correct in that. Um, Riga, but you are talking about these appointments and how these appointments are, um, have been skewed by the GMD of the NNPC. Clearly, and because we also have an idea of what the seniority is because we belong to the industry, it does not reflect merit or seniority. Now, in addition, it is causing serious internal conflict and uh, bad blood and demotivation 
So how do you achieve progress with this kind of a messy situation that we have deliberately created? So that is the way to see it. And also, the even deeper dimension is there is a violation of our laws. It is lawlessness because the NMPC board is a creation of law. It is not because Buhari feels that there needs to be an NMPC board. It is created by the law. So, and nobody is above the law, and the rule of law requires compliance from everybody. Mm. So that is even the deeper dimension of total disorder and lawlessness. Chief Azak, I'll let you talk about these appointments now that has um, also stirred um, controversy. But before that, we have a caller from Surulere. Good morning. Godwin from Surulere here in Lagos. Good morning, Godwin. Good, good morning, Godwin. You're on. Godwin. Hello. Yes, good morning. Go ahead. What's your contribution? Good morning. Thank you very much. Please, I have a take. My own is that uh, I, have, I have realized that in this society, our government are taking followers for granted for so many reasons. Hello? Go ahead. Can you hear me? Loud and clear, Godwin. Yes. Our side, our president, our leaders have taken our, our society or taking the leader for granted for so many years. And I am I'm, I'm looking at this particular thing that the president should be up and doing in this particular case. Because I can't say that he is a minister of petroleum and first thing is going on under his own administration and there is nothing to, and he's not saying anything about it. It, it, please, uh, I want you to pass this information to him that Nigerians are so much uh, they are, uh, uh, angry. They are fed up with the particular uh, administration because we voted him as a president, as a, re as a responsible gov uh, government. But we come to realize that all their work is what. All right. Thank you very much, Gordon from Sule. It could go on and on. Now, Chief Larry Razak, uh, about these all, appointments. We, we, we all read the list of the appointed. Uh, as other Nigerians read it. And what, what, we what, know what, what is it? right and we know what is wrong. And we know what the law says. And we're all aware of uh, zoning of position. And we, we, we even have a whole agency. Commission. Responsible commission. Uh, commission. A commission. Federal character. For federal character. character. Mm. If the gentleman had committed a breach of that very important aspect, and that is what brings us to the together as Nigerians, to have sense of belonging, to be part of what happens in the center. All units of these nationalities in this country are entitled to. If he had done it without regard for those fundamental things, Mr. President is expected, is the one they wrote the letter to, is expected to act. The National Assembly, who's representing all of us at the National Assembly, they've seen the matter. Based on Kajiku's letter, they've called for probe. My own position is that let us anxiously give a position of wait and see, anxious waiting for the National Assembly's result, for the President's result. Luckily, ministry is under him. He's the Minister for Petroleum. NMPC, we are the gentleman, the group managing director, is the big boss, is under the President. The Minister of State is acting for the President as the junior minister in that place. Is the, chair, is the chairman of the board. If all those things happen without his knowledge, he had reported to the President. Okay. You want to be informed and told that under presidential system, all this, the President have the right to pick the person to assist him right. to do his job and get the best result oh, for Nigerians. All right, all right, Chief. They will, they, they, they will stand to be questioned by Nigerians, by all nationalities in this country, okay, so. that you put in somebody who now deny us of our right and think that the whole thing is personal to a group or a unit. All right, Chief. I Chief. will Chief. want <laughs> us to really, look at really it, out and of time. it must, yeah. it must, it must be acted upon. And I know Mr. President will do all okay. that. Okay. Failure, it will... A road and we must, we must into wait. his status yeah. as a man that did not tolerate 
corruption. corruption. And you said we must wait and see. Thank you very much, gentlemen. I must appreciate um, your presence on the program today. Well, that's all we can take on the program today. You can watch a repeat of uh, this program later in the night on the same station. Thank you very much for watching the program. My name is Femi Akonde. Good morning.